losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness Hello, it's Maxine It's uh late at night I'm deciding to wear this wig today <sighs> I got a few weeks shortly after I cut all my hair off a couple of years ago and I've barely put them to use so I wish I could have my hair this color all the time I do a whole bunch of blonde with pastels but I can't afford that <laughs> Anyway, guess what the topic is today? <laughs> today we're talking about sex. <laughs> and I put some notes here for me to like, um, <laughs> paper and pen notes to kind of stay somewhat on track and in case I forget sort of what I'd like to talk about. But, um... Let's see. <laughs> it's also late at night again, so I'm probably going to be like whispering and trying not to laugh my ass off. <laughs> I just have to say that first and foremost, I am not a doctor, psychologist, or relationship spe specialist. <laughs> I'm just going to um, speak from experience. And also my experience is not all who are autistic, have ADHD, OCD, or have CPTSD. For most of my life, I didn't know about these things. So now that I do know these things about myself, it's at least going to help me kind of explain why sex is such like a kind of difficult <laughs> Thing. like I think a lot of people who are autistic like struggle in relationships and then I mean if you're struggling in relationships you're probably not gonna be getting to the intimate factor <laughs> in life or it could be the other way around maybe you'd prefer sexual relationships and not the real um, you know, serious commitment, and that's just not, that's not just autistic, that's just in general, or possibly CPTSD. I just kind of wanted to explain a little bit about what it's like for me, the things that I struggle with, the things that I, um, I think that I'm, I thrive at, <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and just kind of like, um, I think some of this also could perhaps help people who are in intimate relationships with neurodivergent people, but they themselves are, you know, um, neurotypical or even, whoops, I'm going to try not to shake around, <laughs> or, um, you know, or they could be no neurodivergent, dating a neurodivergent person, or it could just possibly even help people who don't really identify with any of that, but they still struggle with anxiety. Like anxiety, I believe, is still on the spectrum of like neurodivergent disorders, but a lot of people just have anxiety about things, whether they're 
like we all have anxiety at one point or another, whether it's public speaking or in relationships or work or triggers um, or being out in public. There's a million types driving and it doesn't exactly make you like a neurodivergent person if you have some <laughs> some um, anxiety of course so anyway getting started here oh I better open up something as well So, for starters, I wanted to kind of say, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I wanted to thank Cosmopolitan Magazine because <laughs> I just started <laughs> looking and reading them at, out, you know, in my early teens. And I don't know what the magazine's about these days. Like, I probably haven't, I haven't had a pers- um, subscription or anything for probably like 15 years but there was a period in my life I did have them and um it is a really positive thing like it taught us about not only like tips and tricks and relationships and how to like satisfy your partner but it taught us about like self gratification and like and you know, the importance of that, like, I don't like the word, masturbation such an ugly word, but, <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. So, um, I just think that there's stigma with that too, because I think like in some religions, even it's like a sin, but if you're comfortable with yourself, it really helps in relationships and it helps you to be able to like tell your partner what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy. And some people just, it's not for them. Like I had friends, some friends say like it, it's just boring. You prefer to be with a partner. But I also know some people who have that sort of opinion and then, uh, they didn't even experience an orgasm with a partner or by themselves for like almost 30 years. So I think it is really important if you like look into this early on. And also I should say that I'm not encouraging, I don't want parents to come for me. I'm not telling youth to go do these things. That's not really the message I'm trying to send. I'm just saying that for me personally, I appreciate reading about this at a young age because I just feel like it helped me. Like when you're doing that at a young age um, or any age, it just teaches you about your body. And then it's also sort of like an outlet, like a release. So with stress and whatnot, and <laughs> my dog's dreaming in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just think that magazine and because, you know, like nowadays it feels like kids are kind of going to look towards porn to kind of figure out what sex is really like and it's not really like that I mean for some it is but for some it's kind of teaching the wrong message like it's not like kids are getting the wrong idea like not all bodies are gonna look like that like not everyone has implants or has the perfect makeup and hair at all times or like the perfect lighting or the perfect angles and even the the sounds and the expressions aren't always <laughs> I mean some people like like that like a production and it's like feels like you're in some kind of movie I guess when you're in those moments but 
um, I just know, like, for example, I had a friend who was in her 40s and I was in my mid-20s and she would say, like, you know, and she would um, hook up with guys who were a lot younger than her and she was saying that they just think that it's all about, like, thrusting and <laughs> effing like a rabbit when that's not exactly pleasurable to all women. <laughs> So I just think some boys and girls are going to get the wrong idea about um, porn. But again, like I said, that's um, to each their own. But <laughs> um, so I didn't get too organized in my writing. It's kind of going to bounce back and forth between some CPTSD things, some triggers, some autistic things, and just general thoughts, and, but, um, for example, for me, like, I would find, and this is before I knew I was autistic, like, long, long before, but during those intimate moments, I would get extremely overstimulated if I didn't, like, follow this certain checklist like <laughs> I used to have to pretty much like have a checklist of things to do before I knew that I was going to like be intimate in a relationship or um just like friends with benefits kind of situations <laughs> and it was like you know shower hair makeup um cleaning and <laughs> like cleaning my room and making the bed and it like there was no way that very few times um unless like once I was in an actual relationship and once I was comfortable I was able to but in those early stages with m pretty much all my relationships I had to follow this sort of like strict schedule otherwise I just wouldn't be able to enjoy myself and or I'd get overstimulated, or say I don't have music playing in the background, then I would hear, and it's not like I'm not enjoying myself, but I guess it's just an autistic thing that we, an ADHD thing, where your senses are heightened. So I could be in the moment and say I'm even about to have an orgasm then I hear something and it's like I have to start over again pretty much just an example I can't believe how candid I'm being and <laughs> it might be a huge mistake but I think a lot of people talk about sex and a lot of people don't talk about it when they maybe should and maybe they're not enjoying themselves in their relationships or with their partners or even after marriage because they're not they haven't really read too much about it they or they think porn is what it's like or they their partner doesn't really know what they're doing or um but if I go through all these things, I think it may help at least someone out there or a few. So, and again, I'm not um, telling people what to do, just explaining what works for me or what I've heard or what I've experienced and the good and bad. And so also with autism and CPTSD, I felt like in the beginning, when I was a lot younger, I definitely abused alcohol. So not only in social situations, not only to numb my fibromyalgia pain, but during intercourse, I just felt like in the very early years, I was almost never sober anytime I had sex. Like I just could not because, um, you know, with my weight too fluctuating, but at such a young age, having like loose skin stretch marks and all of that, like too, I just wasn't comfortable in my skin and, you know, I'd want to have like all the lights off and, um, but 
I was using alcohol during those moments too and I remember like the very first few times I was intimate where I was sober I was just so overwhelmed that I like cried after because I just felt like I couldn't really enjoy myself I couldn't have fun I could I was worried about disappointing the person I was with because I wasn't really being myself or relaxed or um yes yeah, so and also the ugly sides of abusing alcohol during those times was that I was taken advantage of by partners um sometimes so and because my relationship with alcohol and my relationship with sex with partners was just so abnormal um I you know didn't even realize sometimes the way I was being taken advantage of and yeah I don't think I'm gonna go into specifics with that at the moment but all I'll say is uh, if you're with somebody and they're like literally pat okay say you go into a sexual experience and you're both drunk or both had a drink or had one or whatever and whether you're drunk or not say you're being intimate with someone but they're just exhausted they've had like a really tough week like let's just say that at some point during the sexual experience that person passes out whether it be from being drunk or just completely exhausted mentally and physically like you should not continue that's one example and yes I have like very vivid memories of times like that so anyway um this post was supposed to or post this video was supposed to be more like the fun side of it but I think it's still important to talk about that too like if it doesn't matter if in the beginning of that hookup you were that person was consenting but at some point they're well, I mean, I think if you're in extremely intoxicated, you probably shouldn't be doing it anyway. But, I mean, we all do that at times and we, or have, or in our 20s or, anyway. Um, all I'm trying to say is, like, if you're going into something where it seems like it's consensual and then that person passes out, like, that's not, no longer, um, because... Well, in some of my experiences, anyway, all I'm trying to say is that this other person was sober, so. Anyway, um. So, a thing about being autistic is that, like, I had a lot of crushes in my life, but I would, I very rarely ever had, like, this sexual desire, like, early on, like, I was very bad at flirting and I think that a lot of the time because I'm just like I was genuinely like a happy person or tried to be friendly to everybody or I'm always smiling and laughing like people kind of would get the wrong idea sometimes too that I was just like flirting with them when I wasn't but even when I was interested in someone I was not <laughs> it was just really awkward and then there were times where I did notice if a guy was very much into me and I just would like completely block it out of my <laughs> even if I was interested sometimes too I would just like I don't know <laughs> why but um I guess it's just like I wasn't ready I was definitely like a late bloomer when it came to that like I was probably an early bloomer when it came to like reading about sex, learning about sex, learning about masturbation. But when it came to being with a partner, um, there have been times in my life where I'm almost kind of like, am I asexual? Cause I just, I'm 34 now and I, I'm not 
there were a lot of years, like I said in the past about online dating, where I just kind of really didn't put myself out there or, but, um, like even for example, right now, so I'm like, I have a lot of, um, confidence in who I am now and I feel very appreciative that I got my diagnoses of like CPTSD and autism and fibromyalgia and everything else but um one thing I am struggling with is sex like recently I was just thinking maybe I should get back out there and actually start dating or maybe I'm just looking for an intimate relationship again I don't exactly know but the second I get back on to the online dating world I just it makes me want to delete it the same day so I don't know what part of me is struggling with that if it's autism CPTSD or all of the above or still struggling with my weight too not feeling confident with that but um oh my god this wig is so uncomfortable <laughs> like a needle poking in my head anyway um so that is one page so yeah I put the list I would make before sex like I already named a whole bunch of things but like flossing <laughs> like so when I mention these things and it's kind of just all over the place what I'm trying to say about that is maybe um, if you're with somebody who you know is neurodivergent or isn't really that comfortable in your experiences with them maybe you should allow them time to be able to like do those things for themselves if you think that's what they need or maybe just communicate with them because I had had some sort of relationships in my life where you know they're trying to booty call you late at night and I just very few times would I like be willing to go do that because it's like if I'm gonna go see you or you're gonna come see me back to this grainy annoying view <laughs> I keep running out of room no matter what I do. It's so freaking irritating. Like, when I've deleted, like, all my photos, all my videos, and then I still don't have room to record on my phone, and I paid extra for extra iCloud space. I just don't know. I am um, computer illiterate, and even iPhone, it seems, so... <laughs> We'll just have to keep switching the view. It's really annoying. But, whatever. I don't even know where I was. <laughs> so, um... She'll work on my posture. <laughs> so... I guess I was just saying, like, for, um, your partner, if you think that if they're just showing signs where they're really uncomfortable, but you know that they love you and they're into you, that maybe you should try to see if just that they need time and they're not as, um, what's the word? Just not as flexible, not as, um, I'm sure a lot of women are like that, and even men, where they just have a hard time just, um, I cannot think of the word, but you know what I mean. Like, they have a harder time being as, um, what the hell is that freaking word? It's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> anyway, um, Yeah, because as I was saying, like, I had to, like, turn down, which is actually kind of, like, rejecting my F buddy of, like, a very long time. Like, I, it's kind of a story for another day, but I had, like, a friend's 
not a friends with benefits, just like a somebody who it started off kind of just being like an intimate only type of relationship, but over time I like had feelings for this person and but it kind of had gone on it on and off for like eight years. <laughs> And as an autistic person or just with my past, I just, once I was, and I've always sort of been this like kind of hopeless romantic, like monogamous type of person where like once I developed feelings for this person, it was really hard for me to want to be intimate with anyone else. Like even if I was talking to other guys to see if just dating would be be something that we'd both that would work for both of us I just I don't know I just kind of stopped putting myself out there for a long time because of this like eight year thing even if it wasn't very serious to that person I mean like it doesn't exactly matter how serious it is to the other person like for the other person involved if like they have feelings and they've been and it's like a comfort thing too like even if you know it's not really that right like you know the relationship is not good for you long term it's just like a comfort thing where it was hard to move on and I did tell this person as well that like I kind of wish they would like leave me alone and not contact me anymore numerous times over the years because I had feelings and I just wanted to be able to move on and so this person definitely abused their power in that way where like they kind of just tell me what I want to hear and and come back like there would be months where we wouldn't talk and then they'd always message and you know just made me feel kind of like a last resort but they would tell me like what I wanted to hear of course and that they do care even though they would like hardly ever ask me anything about myself or never wish me happy birthday nothing like it was pretty disgusting and they really hurt me in a lot of other ways too but like I said maybe I'll uh, talk about that another day it's just really complicated um I think I just had a harder time letting go because, I don't know, just with all the things I mentioned, like autism and ADHD and like CPTSD and it's kind of like, anyway, it is just sad and this was before I um, had really dived in deep into myself and gotten help and everything else and now that I know all these things like I definitely demand a lot more respect for myself and from others like I'm not just going to be with anyone if it's not right and I'm not going to stay in relationships that are toxic and and I just don't know if I'm ever going to really, I don't know when I'm going to be ready or if I'll ever be ready. But I just feel, it's one thing that I just feel like I'm very black and white about a lot of things, but I just feel extremely conflicted about this particular subject because it's like, I don't want to be alone. And I do miss being intimate with others and I miss being in a relationship where like, I think I'm a good girlfriend. I'm adventurous. I like to do things in and out of the home. I'm caring and considerate. And and you can still have somewhat deep conversations with me. And you can still joke with me. But, um, you know, like, a lot of people look at what the type of things that I'm talking about. And they just say, oh, it's like you have baggage. Where it's like some guys will say people with children as baggage and they don't want a relationship with that person. I think that's horrible, but I've heard it before. But anyway, 
oh, it'll just take a while probably to find someone who um, understands and hopefully isn't going to take advantage and yeah but so um Yeah, and with the whole rejection thing of my everybody will just say, um, like, you know, if he's messaging me late at night and I have to work, that was another thing, too. <sighs> but anyway, um, I just put how I kind of mentioned before, I don't exactly know, even now, if I'm a very sexual person, like, they're has to be a connection like a true connection and it has to be like an in-person thing because like I'll talk to somebody online or when I'm swiping images like I will tend to just go no 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 <laughs> and I do like men but I just have a really hard time um I'm not attracted to just images like it has to be like there's a certain word for it but I um I'm very much about the connection and and I just don't I'm not really that like I'm just not lusting after like images or but there was a time in my life where I kind of just thought like I had something to prove like all my girlfriends are all like beautiful intelligent um in relationships, neurotypical, like smart, funny, everything, and they have their first boyfriends, and then there's me who's struggling and not really getting, not really seeking or getting asked out all the time. And I kind of just felt like I had something to prove or something. Like there was a time where I would just kind of like hook up with guys who were out of my league as you would say <laughs> like quite often and some interesting things happened too where it's like a lot of guys from my high school like reached out to me after over the years and I don't know if it's because they just heard rumors about me and they just thought I'd be like easy to get with or something or if they had always been attracted to me or they saw me kind of um I don't know but it kind of just made me think like oh these guys are have always kind of had a thing for me but they're embarrassed of me because I'm not like the cool girl or I'm not the most attractive or I'm not um physically fit or all the things but they wanted to like try to hit me up and hook up and it's like they're embarrassed of they don't want to ask me out on dates and stuff they just want to use me but I mean on the other hand like I'm not gonna I shouldn't speak so negatively because there were times in my life where that's just really all I wanted to like one of the guys for example he <laughs> Like, it started off with, like, us just talking about that, and we were going to do that, and then he's sending me images and stuff, and but then some point along in our conversation, he's like, well, why can't we just hang out? Like, why does it have to be about that? And it's like, well, come on, buddy, that's, like, what you started off with. That's what you were talking about, and that's, you're sending me pictures, and suddenly you're asking me why can't we just almost like hang out like like a relationship it was kind of just took me by surprise <laughs> but anyway um like kind of back to what I said about I just don't know if it's the autistic side of me or CPTSD or all of the above, but I've just felt sort of asexual at times where I'm not really, like, even when I've had, like, little crushes here and there, I'm not really, like, I'm not getting those feelings where 
like where I just am thinking about sex and hooking up. <laughs> I started off being all confident. Oh, sex, masturbation, and now we're here and I'm like not even saying the word sex. <laughs> but anyway, um... So yeah, sometimes I re-add my dating apps and then I instantly delete, just not sure if I'm exactly ready. And another thing too with um, my past, I just kind of, oh, um, One thing I kind of have noticed about myself, and I think it probably maybe is a CPTSD thing, but I'm somewhat interested in, like, submissive, dominant type of style relationships, and it's not the abuse or embarrassment or that's not the kind I like. I just feel like in order to really enjoy myself, I do feel like I have to feel in control in some way, like... And, and it doesn't mean that I'm like forcing them to do things they don't want to do. It's just that I sometimes just more so enjoy like pleasing the partner that I'm with and, and making it more about them than about me. And, but not in a way where they're aggressive. I know some women do like that when the guy kind of takes control and it is a turn on to some people, but in order to get to that stage in sexual relationships, I have to be like extremely comfortable with the person. I have to know that they're not going to flip a switch and like hurt me or um, I'm sure that's common for a lot of people. Like you have to really trust the person in order to let loose. Just with my past, I think that's the main thing, because I'm sure, like, there's a lot of people who seem to be able to really, like, be able to explore and try all new types of things and really, like, allow themselves to be free when they hook up, but for me, it's very, just like everything in my entire life, it's a complicated thing that it's just not easy, like, nothing is, comes easy. So, and being fat and with the loose skin, as I mentioned too, so that was another issue, just not being, feeling like I've ever really be, been able to like fully be comfortable. And if you find that the person you're with is a little bit shy or uncomfortable, like it just maybe allow them to like, one thing that helps me is like wearing lingerie. I just feel a lot better and if certain parts of me are covered and I know some men wouldn't like that, but um, you just have to do you. <laughs> but um, So other things on my like list when I'm having sex from being overstimulated. I said music and the body issues. A friend gave me good advice once. Um, cause before I used to do it in like pitch black, like when I was a lot younger, like all the curtains are down, not a single bit of lights in the room. <laughs> and, um, but my friend told me that candlelight is flattering. So that's something I tried and then it did help me kind of just get out of my shell a little bit and enjoy myself. And another thing, um, I, of course this won't be for everyone, but for me I find that I really have to start off slow. Like some people like things hot and heavy and fast and I have to, like even someone I knew for a while, like if he came at me right away and was like trying to make out with me all passionately, I just freeze like it has to things just have to slow down 
if things are too fast, it's wait, it's overstimulating. Like the sounds, the sight, the feeling, everything. <laughs> it just has to. So say you're with someone and they're neurodivergent and maybe they're autistic and you just find that they're not really giving you what you prefer. You like to go into things all fast. Just try slowing down and then over time um, the speed of things may change. I have to pause this for a second. Okay, so I was just saying about if you're with a partner and they're not going kind of the pace that you'd like or prefer just don't give up on it like so soon because just wait to see if they'll be more comfortable and things may change or just ask them what they like and maybe ask those things in advance so you're not like disappointed or like those are types of things I'm thinking of when I'm going to eventually date and meet new people is like I want to be honest about what my preferences are right off the bat to see if they align and um, also in all of this it's okay to not want sex either and I need to tell myself that too. But I do miss those aspects. And I enjoy intimacy. And I like, I like love cuddling. And I miss that. I know there's certain things out there where you could just be in like a cuddling type of relationship. I just don't know if I would be open to something like that. But the thought is nice. But I just don't think I would participate in something like that. But another thing too is um, autistic people love, like, tend to love like weighted blankets, like just the pressure. I don't know what it exactly does to us. I haven't looked into the reason why, but I've been meaning to get a weighted blanket. But that was something I sort of just liked in my relationships. I I just liked being squished <laughs> like a sponge, <laughs> like cuddling wise. <laughs> Like, sometimes I kind of just miss cuddling and that more than being intimate. Like, being intimate and having sex is really important to some people in relationships. And I think that when I'm in relationships and I'm comfortable with the person, then that is important to me as well. But, um, like, foreplay is very important. <laughs> Don't uh, sleep on four plague, <laughs> especially for women. Like if you're wondering why your partner who's a female isn't like, maybe they're, you're having to rely on lubricants and stuff a little bit too much. It might be because you're kind of just jumping into things and you're not figuring out what type of four, four play works for them because like, I just notice a huge difference for myself when, <laughs> yeah, like I've almost been, um, like there was a time or two where the guy who I had been seeing for a long time was like, why aren't you <laughs> like lubricated and it's like, has nothing to do with my attraction to you or whatever it's just like maybe we just jumped into it too soon like because I anyway that's a bit too much but <laughs> just food for thought if you're per if you're like wondering why you um might need to start relying on lubricants at such a young age I mean some people just love them and enjoy them and they are they work great and maybe you don't have time to be doing things the other way but <laughs> I don't know I think 
foreplay, like for me, is very important. And also, I've I'm okay with saying this because I feel like I've just seen enough shows and like whatever people talk about sex and it's normal and it's nothing to be ashamed about and I shouldn't be sitting here kind of like embarrassed I should be able to just express what's on my mind but um like I just want to say that there when you're with someone and they like pleasing as much as you enjoy it or even more <laughs> when they make it about the other person not just about themselves it's like the best <laughs> like I've had maybe 25 to 30 partners in my life which to by today's standards that's probably not that much but in the past like I don't know, six years, I've maybe only had three partners, but most of these partners were in the early years of my life or like mostly my 20s. And I've kind of seen what different guys are like and what they prefer and how they are, but I'll always appreciate the guys who like, like love to please and it like they make it their mission. Like those are... 10 out of 10. <laughs> there are some guys who kind of like, anyway, um, just a tip for you guys. If you like want to please your partner and you want ladies to stick around and you're wondering why, you know, you're going through relationships and people aren't, <laughs> anyway, just think maybe get those old 90s early 2000s cosmopolitan magazines with all the tips <laughs> anyway um, so right before i was making this video i kind of had this like sick to my stomach feeling because it's <sighs> Because I've, like, talked about, um, abuse and stuff in this way, and I can see how those types of situations really ruin that sense of self, like, that sense of identity for some women and men, where it's like you don't want to be intimate or you have a really hard time with it um I just felt a lot of anxiety going into this because it's like I've had different professional careers in my life and it makes me worried thinking of some people seeing this but I don't know just like we're human we eat sleep breathe and sex is one of the most important things that we should talk about and this is coming from someone who's autistic with ADHD, OCD, fibromyalgia, and CPTSD. So possibly I may be offering someone some good advice whether it's who knows. <laughs> but um or making people out there feel less alone just like everything else it's like well why am I struggling in this way well anyway um some of my writing is messy and I cannot even read it what is this about what oh I guess I'll mention a little bit again about porn so I think like they have everything out there for all people and all interests and all different genres but um like there is positives and negatives to it but 
another thing, um, like depending where you live too, it's like very hard sometimes to have like a true experience like with an orgasm when you have to like be quiet, like how I'm speaking softly now hoping to God my neighbors aren't hearing what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, sometimes I find like for myself and I think other people I've talked to is like orgasms aren't like this sometimes it's like big production where you're like moaning and um I think like some men might get discouraged thinking that their partner is not enjoying themselves if they're not like you know screaming or whatever but for me anyways like it's kind of a build up like you could be almost completely silent and then when you're about to it can get louder so just another thing to consider um so some of you guys don't feel so like hurt or rejected like thinking they're not having a good time um just remember that it's not not everyone's going to be like acting like you see in porno <laughs> and I think that could be hurtful to some guys like they might get offended or wonder why they're not enjoying themselves but they really could be and another thing too um for like me being an autistic ADHD person like say I'm about to have one and then if um, if the person says, are you going to, or even if I say I'm going to, it like literally, sometimes it just ends it like, <laughs> and it's like, I have to start all over again. I don't know what it is. It's like the psychological thing where if I say I'm about to, or that someone asks if I'm about to, I just, it's like the sensation is completely gone. <laughs> So, so yeah, along with, um, not screaming at the top of your lungs, um, if the person's not communicating that they're really enjoying themselves or about to come, like, don't, um, yeah, don't take offense to that. It might kind of be a surprise sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, let's see. Um, back to what I said about Cosmo. I just put, honestly, thank you, Cosmopolitan Magazine, for letting us ladies know early on or at any age for that matter that sex, self-gratification, masturbation is normal, healthy, and natural. And also, thanks for all the tips when learning how to please your partner with oral or sexual positions and more. And, um, it's kind of cool thinking back to those years long before cell phones and internet <laughs> years. <laughs> so there's no, inf no way I'd get this information otherwise. And although I do hate the exposure that I got at a very early age, it's not the same at all as choosing to go looking for that information. One is forced and the other is choice, period. So you don't have to be ashamed if, you know, you're still having sexual um, desires to other people, like, in your, like, you just don't have to be ashamed if, like, if you've experienced some types of abuse and then you are still having desires as just a normal human, like, to people your age or whatever, like, well, people your age and older or around your age, like, legally, I'm just, because of what I'm saying, it's, um, anyway. I just put some ASD individuals might, de oh, I put in brackets, so I heard this quote and I don't know where from, but some ASD individuals might develop 
quantitative anyway of develop above average or non-normative sexual behaviors and interests so hypersexual and paraphilia fantasies and behaviors so that is something um i felt like an early age when i did learn how to please myself i was sort of using that often as like a release of stress and from everyday life and There is goods and good things and bad things about that. Like, well, I mean, partners are more than just about sex, but I guess when you're sort of like, please, like when you're getting gratification in that way, then maybe you're not looking for a partner so much because your needs are sort of already being met in that way. Even though it could be more, like, you could, it's more enjoyable with a partner for some. So, yeah, I just put again, again, I think I've said this like three, four times now, but I said, I only really feel in the mood these days when I'm freshly showered, clean clothes, full beat on my face, especially when I haven't worn makeup in a while and finally done up lashes and all. I pretty much want to screw myself. <laughs> oh my god, I hope certain people don't see this. Anyway, um... Let's see... Back to sort of what I said before about kind of seeking, like, kind of getting intimate with men who were, like, out of my league or whatever. Um, I kind of used to, like, brag sometimes to friends about, like, what, like, I was starting, I was being super superficial because just the way that I was made to feel like people always putting me down for how I looked or what I said or how I acted and made me feel so, tried to make me feel so ugly and insecure about myself. I guess in some way I kind of developed this thing where I only wanted to hook up with guys who were like the most attractive and athletic and just men that were not like me at all. Not like you're all perfect, don't get. <laughs> um, not that every single one of them was like a 10 or something, but anyway um it just felt like I had something to prove and I wanted to seem normal and and appear better than I was and I put a quote like the fat autistic girl could get hot prime rib even though she preferred cold wet vegetarian Thai noodles <laughs> and I said wait I mean that metaphorically that just sounds racist <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> oh, so one thing I've noticed in life is that I think a lot of us can see that we can, there can be sexual attraction with a lot of people and so the thing is, and I'm not trying to say this in a way where it's like, I'm obviously far from a prude and I'm not like a super ultra, I'm not a religious person. and But I think this is something that we should take into consideration because I notice a pattern with this is that if you jump into things where you're intimate with someone, then, then I just don't think people are thinking about this sometimes like 
and you jump into something and you have a really good one night stand or whatever after a few dates you hook up with someone and you're really compatible sexually you could be sexually compatible with a lot of people but once you've kind of done that and then you think oh this is my person I've met my match but then you and then now you're connected in some way and then you're telling each other I love you early on because you just feel like this bond because this sexual bond with someone but then now you're having a hard time getting out of that relationship because you've already gone that far well and you've kind of jumped into these things before knowing really personal details like you don't know if you're exactly compatible long term. You don't know if your parenting styles will be the same. You don't know if your political beliefs are the same or just um, so many things. Living together and, and um, or you don't really know who this person is, like what kind of, what, what their background's like and how they treat women. So, or how they treat men. So, um, I'm just noticing that a lot. Like when I think back to certain relationships of people I know, it's like, it's not even really healthy in any way, but you're just so invested emotionally already because you've already crossed that line where you're intimate with them. And now you're kind of sort of connected in this way and you think it's like soulmates are meant to be, but you can have those positive experiences with a lot of people. So I think we should just kind of maybe just talk more about that, like with your children and stuff, because I mean, I'm not trying to take people's rights away and tell them not to hook up. Like some people can just hook up and they can move on and they won't develop such strong of a connection. But I think for some of us, I don't know if it's, an autistic thing, but I don't know. I think I've been hurt a lot in relationships in that way. Like just had such high expectations after hooking up with someone. But I've noticed that a lot with some other relationships I know of that weren't right. And I just know once I'm just repeating myself, but <laughs> once you go there, it's kind of hard to get out of it when it's kind of like too late at that point but um so what I kind of put is if I think we should be taking that into consideration if you're noticing a pattern with the partners you have so if you're kind of wondering like why isn't, why aren't things working out or why is the person I'm with, like, you know, they'll cheat on me or let me down or if you kind of go into things sort of like friends first or seeing if all, like, if your checklist kind of works off first or friends first and then getting intimate later. I think it might be helpful. I think it's hard sometimes, especially being an adult and you just want those experiences and or you want it all. <laughs> but this is just my experience anyway. <coughs> Keep hiccups. <coughs> This video is getting very slow. It's like midnight. <laughs> oh, and I just had like this acid burp. Another thing I was going to say today is what is the strange phenomenon where you ate like way more than usual and then the next day you wake up and you're lighter on the scale? Like what? How does that make any sense? <laughs> like sometimes I wonder if my metabolism is just slower because I don't I'm not consistent with my meals and maybe I'm not even eating as much as people would suspect. Like I'm not drinking Coke or Diet Cokes or I'm not eating chips three meals a day. Like I'm eating pretty healthy, but th like yesterday I just 
ate like way overboard to my usual and I woke up today like lighter on the scale and I was like what the hell and that has happened at times <laughs> someone explain <laughs> like well, maybe all along I should have been eating more <laughs> and I've been starving myself more than you would think but anyway um I just put kind of along with the Cosmo thing. I'm thankful that self-gratification has kept me from getting into sexual relationships that could have been extremely toxic. I mean, I have been in extremely toxic relationships, but maybe possibly a lot more if I hadn't had um, taking care of needs on my own. But um, I put on the other hand that maybe I'm a little too comfortable. <laughs> Like, I'm not, um, it's like, well, why be with it? Just at some point when you're single for long enough, it's just so comfortable. It's like, why be in a relationship? Like, there's no arguments. You don't have to check in with anyone. You don't have to ask for permission. You just, it's like complete freedom. So that's kind of another thing that I struggle with in all of this, but I'm finally getting to the point where I think I'm, like, with making these videos too, I'm, like, ready to get back out there and go out of my comfort zone. So I think that's part of what I've been doing, like, with these videos and now trying to step back into dating. <sighs> Oh my god, I wish I could be a dating coach where though I have so much experience with online dating, I want to like message all these guys and ask if I can fix their profiles and take better pictures of them and stuff. <laughs> That's something I wish I could do. I just, it's like, come on, just smile a little more and like include more information. And I guess it all depends what you're looking for, but sometimes it's like, I want to help you. <laughs> It'd be cool to get paid to do that. But, um, anyway. So, yes, I know that was very much all over the place and nothing that I included there was, um, from textbook about CPTSD or autism, but this is just sort of my experience as a human. And with sex and intimacy and everything else and and yeah so I think I forgot to include a lot more but before I let you go I'm just gonna look at one more thing One day I am gonna 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 get more specific into some relationships, but I think I'm just gonna save that for another day. And again, not naming names or trying to embarrass anyone, just solely speaking from experience and hopefully to help others or just venting is helpful too but yeah it looks like that's it so thank you for viewing um <laughs> I should have probably put a warning at the beginning like don't proceed if you don't want to hear about an autistic overweight chick talking about <laughs> CPTSD person talking about sex but um <laughs> maybe someone out there will enjoy this so anyway talk to you later